Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today. Hi, everybody. Dan Holman, Mike Beer for Kentucky Derby Prep Recap. We're going to take a look back at the grade three Sam F. Davis stakes at Tampa Bay Downs. We're going a mile and a 16th. We expected a lot of speed in this race. We break from the gate. One horse ever do it, who is 127 to one, is going to drop the jockey. He'll get corralled by the outrider eventually. He's okay. As I said, we expected a lot of speed. No more time goes to the front. He sets a legitimate pace. He keeps on going. Yeah, he makes the lead, though, pretty easily around the first turn here. He doesn't have to work that hard to get there. I'm with you. He's not walking um, on the lead. It seems like a pretty fairly run race, but he's in control from early on, and that loose horse doesn't really bother him at all up front. He took a lot of money in this race to go off the three to one favorite, but as you see, he cleared off to the front, change of command, stepping up in class for Suge McGahee off an impressive allowance victory. Looks like he's in a very good position. You could argue he was the disappointment of this race by far. He was he was bad in here. Um, they did not want to lead with them because it felt like they could have at least gone and put some pressure on this horse, and they wanted to sit just off him here. He can never really reach the challenge. He has nothing through the stretch of this race. The horse right to his outside though, West Saratoga, he'll at least take a run at the winner around the turn here. He just gets turned away. West Saratoga was overlooked in the wagering at 30 to one. He's already a stakes winner and he makes a strong move at no more time. To no more time's credit, he's gonna shoo West Saratoga away and keep on going. Agate Road utilizing the same running style on turf uh, he's going to start to make up some ground on the outside for Todd Pletcher. He's going to get up for second. He doesn't threaten for the win, but it shows he at least handles this surface. Yeah, I mean, he ran, he debuted on this surface and ran fine. Another second place finish that day. This is his return to dirt and obviously a tougher spot. And he runs well again. He trailed. He always traveled, though. He clearly handles the dirt. Um, and he also happened to get, I mean, a pretty good closer's trip and ride here. The sort of in out around the final turn. He makes a run. He's never a real threat. Uh, but, man, I thought the setup was there for this horse. He was just second best. No, he ran just fine in this race. And Todd Pletcher said afterwards they'd consider a race like the Tampa Bay Derby for Agate Road. Distance shouldn't be an issue. But with his running style, he has no speed. He needs pace, as he got in this race. He needs a little bit of a trip. We talked about West Saratoga. It was a nice, even performance. I'm not sure if he's a derby horse. Probably gakes some on to the road to the Tampa Bay Derby at the very least. I guess you could take it the next step with him and just see what happens, Dan. Um, I personally didn't see his excuse in here. To me, he just wasn't good enough, but it wasn't a terrible performance. Uh, change of command was terrible. Should McGahey said Tyler Gaffalion told him he didn't handle the track. And I understand you don't handle the track, but you can't get beat a million. I guess when you when you run that poorly at four to one in a derby prep, you got to have some kind of an excuse. Um, I always loved the didn't handle the track one because it doesn't really mean anything. The source was terrible. Copper Tax was making his first start of the year after running in the Remsen. And maybe this start proved that he's not really a graded stakes type at this point, And he might want slightly shorter distances. Yeah, I mean, he got bumped uh, at the start by the horse that dropped his rider. But after that, I mean, you could this horse was under pressure from a long way out. He just could not keep up. Um, whether you liked him or not in this race, he, he was pretty disappointing. Tireless also for Todd Pletcher, just an even performance. Todd said afterwards, back to turf. I can see that, I guess. I mean, I, I didn't really see his excuse in here. I thought overall his trip was pretty good. Um, and he just really could never make any kind of an impression uh, on this race. He also happened to get pretty tired through the stretch. Elysian Meadows, I thought, showed some promise considering his inexperience, considering his lousy post position, and considering he was stretching out significantly. This was a solid enough performance for him. I'm not saying he's a derby horse, but Milwaukee does have a nice little New York bread on his hands here. I'll agree with all that stuff. I mean, he was four wide on the first turn. Um, after that, it felt like he had a, a pretty a pretty clean trip overall as the field stretched out a little bit. And Agate Road, the runner-up, just sort of ran right by him on the second turn of this race. But he plugged on pretty well. He almost got third at the end. Mike, my concern about the Sam F. Davis overall, not just the slow final time, no more time only earned an 80 buyer speed figure. But aside from Agate Road, there was really no running going on behind the winner. Did you see any excuses for anybody else? I didn't really see uh, too many excuses. I mean, uh, Crazy Mason, uh, I think he finished sixth in here. He, he, he was in some traffic into the first turn of the race and he sort of had a steady and he lost position. But I don't know, man. It's not like he made some kind of huge run after that where you felt like he was unlucky. 
I'm with you, Dan. The race just didn't come up that fast. It didn't seem like there was, you know, tons of running going on outside of the one, two finishers here. Um, and I don't even know if you could be that excited about Agate Road going forward, even though we had to come from last at a wire to wire winner, Dan. First half of this race is 46 and three. Second half of this race is 49 and four. I mean, it's a perfect setup for a closer. We'll take a closer look at No More Time and Iowa Bread. It's Caitlin Clark and No More Time, the two best Iowa breads in sports right now. In that order by a pretty large margin, Caitlin Clark. But No More Time, an 80 buyer speed figure, only his fourth lifetime start. He takes them gate to wire. Uh, Jose D'Angelo said this is not a very big colt. He doesn't want to overdo it with him. In an ideal world, he'd run him one more time before the Kentucky Derby. That might come in either the Tampa Bay Derby or the Florida Derby. Either way, the waters get a lot deeper. Yep. Well, it would be nice to see him on a faster one, wherever the final prep race is. Hopefully it's a faster one, but let's, you know, be real about it. Dan, this horse is very lightly raced. And this was, despite it not being fast, this was a step in the right direction for this horse. His prior start to Mucho Macho Man, he got off to a very poor start and it cost him. That was not the case here. He broke well, he went right to the top and he won this race pretty convincingly. A $40,000 yearling by the Rock Solid Stallion, not this time. From the female family of grade one winning two-year-old Siphonic, it's no more time. Who took all the money in the Sam F. Davis, returning $8.60 to win. Agate Road was second. West Saratoga chased the pace, held for third. 5-6-10 in the Sam F. Davis, no more time, wire to wire.